Hi there. Uh, in chapter 15, we're dealing with bonds. And a bond is a type of financial security that a company issues when it needs to borrow money. And so what happens with the bond is that the company issues bonds and then investors buy them. And when they, an investor buys a bond, it gives a company a certain amount of money, usually about $1,000. And in return, the company promises to give the bondholder interest once or twice per year, sometimes four times per year, it depends on the bond, and then it agrees to pay the money back to the bondholder when the bond matures. So when you look at a bond quote, usually the bond is listed with a price in the hundred dollars, right? It'll be, it might say 97, it might say 100, it might say 101, but what that really means is price per one hundred dollars of par value and since bonds usually have a par value of $1,000, the actual price that you're going to pay is going to be equal to that bond price that's quoted times 10. It can be a little confusing, but it is just convention, and so that's how we're going to look at bonds prices. We're going to take the price quoted on Yahoo, we're going to multiply it by 10. So this is going to, we're going to take a look at a Pepsi bond, and we're going to figure out how much money is actually going to change hands when this bond is purchased. So I pulled this data up um, from Yahoo Finance today, what's today, the 21st of January 2014, and Pepsi has a bond, and if you want to buy it, you can buy it for $101.44 per $100 of par value, otherwise known as $1,014.40. It has a coupon rate of 2.25%, which basically means that it's going to pay 2.25% of its par value per year, um, and it's going to pay them semi-annually on January 7th and July 7th of each year. The bond matures on January 7th, 2019, and the company has the right to call the bond on July 7th, 2015, if it so chooses, if interest rates have changed and suddenly it can or as things change, it can reissue its debt or it can borrow more money at a lower interest rate, it would be likely to call the bond on the 15th of July, 2015. So what we need to figure out is if we want to buy this bond, how much money is going to change hands? The obvious answer is $1,000.1440, but be it as it may, that's too simple of an answer because what's happened is that if we're buying the bond, the date that we buy the bond is what's called the settlement date, and usually we will just plug in today's date. If we're going to buy a bond, we're going to buy it today, on the 21st of January 2014. So if we want to buy the bond today, we're going to be buying it from somebody, because this bond is already trading in the public market. We're going to buy it from somebody who's held it, who has owned it since the last coupon was paid on January 7th, 2014. So we need to put in a couple of things that we know. We're going to put in the par value, par value of all bonds we're assuming is $1,000 unless specifically stated otherwise. That's not a date, it's just a number. And then we need to figure out when the last interest payment was made to this person and how much the interest payment was. So the coupon payment, that's also what we call the interest payment is going to be, since they're semi-annual because it pays on January and July 7th, it's going to be equal to two and a quarter percent of the par value, but because it makes it that payment twice a year, we're going to divide it by two. So this company is going to, or Pepsi is going to pay $11.25 to the holder of each bond twice a year. We also need to know when the last coupon payment was made. The last coupon payment, well, if they're paid on January 7th and July 7th of each year, the last one is going to be 1714 or 2014, just a few weeks ago. And the next payment is going to be on 7714. So we can see the next relevant cash flows in terms of payments. So when we buy this bond, we're going to buy it on the 21st, but there have been a number of days since the last coupon payment was made, 
of 11.25 and the date that we buy it. And when we buy the bond, we pay the, the seller of the bond this amount of money, right, the price of the bond, but we also pay them the interest that they've earned since the last interest payment was made. And we call that accrued interest. So let's do over here, let's do an accrued interest calculation. All right, so basically what we have to figure out is what percentage of the period between January 7th of this year and July 7th of this year, what percentage of that time period, over what percentage has the last owner held the bond? So they've held it for some percentage. If we were to say that this six months is 100%, what percent is the period between January 7th and January 21st? So we're going to ask ourselves a few things. We're going to say days since last coupon. And so how many days has it been since the last coupon? Well, lucky for us, Excel will allow us to subtract dates. So the number of days since the last coupon is going to be today's date, the day we bought the bond, minus the date that the last person received their coupon. It's been 14 days. And then we need to know days between the coupon. So they've held it for 14 out of how many days? Well, it's going to be equal to July 7th, 2014, in January 7th, 2014. They're holding it for 14 out of 181 days. And so we can think about that as a percentage. And if we think of that as a percentage and multiply it by the coupon payment, we'll know what the accrued interest is. So our accrued interest is going to be equal to this percentage. To get a percentage, we would divide 14 by 181, 181, sorry about that, and we would multiply it by the coupon payment. And that tells us that we owe, if my slow computer catches up, we owe the seller of this bond 87 cents. So if we start our cash flow chart, we would have our dates and we would have our cash flow. And on our first date, which is today, we would need to pay the seller of the bond, and I'm entering it as a negative with the parentheses because it's going to be a payment, but we're going to have to pay them the price of the bond plus the accrued interest. And that, my friends, is how we calculate the amount of money that changes hands when a bond is purchased. And we use this idea of accrued interest to help us pay back the seller of the bond for the portion of the interest that they have earned, but for which we will receive the payment. All right, happy calculating. Um, as always, email me, come in for office hours if you need anything. Okay.